time like this, our hearts are still like gold, and we are indebted to you. Now, Father, in the next few moments, we pray that you would give us a word, a word that will strengthen and illuminate this family, these friends and these loved ones that have come to support this homeboy service as a brother of a cousin, of a nephew, an uncle who has lived his point of destiny life. God, in advance, we thank you for the declared that shall be done. To bring your kingdom the great glory and honor and praise is our decree and our prayer. In Jesus' name, I want to say that. Amen. He said, These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. How did Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking a rest in sleep. And then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent he may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. For the next few moments, if you would allow me, I want to attempt to deal with this pregnancy and exegete this word that the Lord has given us. I, when I was advised that the request was that I would do the eulogy on today, I asked God to give me a word that would be relevant to everyone that is present on today. I had the do the honor of meeting Kevin Gilchrist, um, an admirable man, calm spirit, laid back guy, uh, loved family, and uh, we often joked around. I told him that he was my cousin uh, because of the last name being Gilchrist. Gilchrist is the strong lineage of my family. And truth be told, y'all know, can't be 
with so many Gilchrist families. And so y'all just didn't know that I'm a couple from another mother. Uh, and he would always laugh whenever he was in service and I was up in the pulpit, I'd say, hey, cousin, um, I am the better for me and knowing him. The Bible says here, that Jesus was on assignment. Uh, and that the disciples found it quite unusual that his assignment meant that he had to delay his arrival to a place that he was predestined to be in. I find it unusual because I've never found it time in the Word of God where Jesus was not everywhere at the same time. He operates within the sovereignty of who he is, simply meaning that he does what he wants, where he wants, 